So it sounds like Warhammer 40k's characters are going to be heading back into their units. Let's talk about a blast from the past from prior to 8th edition, and what these character changes likely imply for 10th edition Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd just touch on something that I didn't bring up in the previous article that Games Workshop published for 10th edition, a rather interesting teaser that characters are going to be working quite differently in units once more, and it sounds like they might be going to a bit more of a 7th edition and before state of affairs where they joined units and squads. Let's talk about the little teasers that Games Workshop have given us, and how character rules in Warhammer 40k worked with 7th and 8th edition, and some of the positives and negatives of both. So firstly, it sounds like this is going to be the subject of a Warhammer community article next week, but GW have basically confirmed that character rules will be changing quite a bit by a couple of comments in their army building and faction rules preview. The quotes that they talked about were that they said that you can get certain enhancements like warlord traits that will be able to enhance the ability of the unit that they're leading, so just the one unit there. And then in their teaser for the next article, they said, hold the phone, did we say leading units? Find out next week here at Warhammer Community. I feel like that first comment might have been a bit take or leave, but given that they follow it up with a second one to basically say that this is going to be a fairly major change to the game, it does look like we're going back to a state of where characters attached to squads in Warhammer 40k, like we had in previous editions, and we do in things like Heresy at the moment. It sounds like it could potentially change really quite a lot, and it could have some big impacts for the major areas of character rules, how they can be shielded from damage, how they fight in close combat, and how they give out buffs and improvements to nearby squads. For those of you who have joined the hobby after 7th edition, in the past basically Warhammer 40k had independent characters, and the system there was really quite different to what we have at the moment. Currently in Warhammer, the characters are kind of independent units, they never really get attached to units in a rules way, like say in the Imperial Guard Cadian Command Squad, that's one of the only examples of that at the moment. But previously in Warhammer, characters could enter and leave different units, you could say have an Eldar Autarch attached himself to a unit of fire dragons, and then in the next turn he could just go off and leave them, and either strike out on his own, or go and attach himself to a unit of howling banshees or something. While they are actually attached to part of the unit, they kind of function similar to something like a unit sergeant, with a few extra special rules and things, and usually some fancy war gear, but moving, shooting and fighting as part of the squad, one unit to most intents and purposes. Generally, things like this worked well enough, it meant that the character will get protection from the squad, as he had to shoot the entire squad dead before you actually killed the character for the most part. Though a few editions did it a little bit differently, say taking casualties from the front, as I believe we did in 7th. The squad would then gain any universal special rules that the character had, or at least a fair few of them. Certain characters could make the squad hit and run, or give them leadership buffs like Fearless maybe. And of course there were things like psychic powers. The system definitely had some issues though. It's generally been one of the areas of the rules that Games Workshop has kind of struggled to get right. I feel like perhaps the very end of 7th edition really exemplifies just how badly character rules weren't being done right at that point. With fairly flexible allied rules, lots of characters from different factions were being put together, giving really big units all sorts of special rules all in one go, and layering on the best psychic powers. Generally, the buffs only apply to their own unit, as opposed to the auras and things that we have in 8th edition and 9th, but it often meant that the rules that they imparted were just as powerful, if not more. They had a slightly odd system of challenges, which I must admit I wasn't entirely the biggest fan of. Generally, you could have your unit champion fighting against a Space Marine character, for example. I feel like it was really quite cool and cinematic in the idea of it, but often it just boiled down to things like a hopelessly outclassed unit sergeant getting killed by a really fighty character. And often the best choice would either be to have your sergeant or character just skulk away and keep out of the fight. It was quite fun, but I kind of feel like it was in need of refinement. In 7th edition as well, you could get some strange, spectacularly tanky characters, maybe a case of things like... Warlord traits and relics gone a bit too far, characters with 2 plus saves, 3 plus invuls, and then ridiculously high feel no pain type saves. You'd have weird situations where the character was basically tougher than most of the rest of the squad put together, so you might have odd situations like these sort of characters leading a big squad of Fembridian wolves or something daft like that. You could certainly gain the damage taking thing, if you were hit by something big and scary like a last cannon you could potentially bounce that onto one of the Fenrisian wolves with a 2 plus lookout serve roll, or if you were hit by small arms then you could just tank that on the character's ridiculously high save, and again not really take much significant damage. It was a bit of a weird system where the two were kind of tougher than either one of them on their own. 
generally when all put together it tended to have a whole amalgam of really strange characters leading really big units with massive psychic powers being put on them and I'd like to think that Games Workshop is smart enough not to return us to this kind of state of affairs. Then in 8th and 9th edition we had some pretty massive changes to how characters worked. Now characters couldn't join a unit but were protected by the new lookout sir rules so you can't shoot them unless they're closest initially. And I feel like they also compensated them for being slightly more vulnerable independent units by giving them some slightly buff defences like more wounds. I found it quite refreshing compared with 7th edition to be honest. It was nice to see Death Stars broken up a bit and I quite enjoyed the way that their buffs worked. The character protection and lookout sir rules have been gradually tweaked throughout 8th and 9th edition though. Initially in 8th they were in a bit of a beta stage, you just literally couldn't shoot a character unless it was the closest unit, so you had the weird situation where other characters could shield each other. I remember people running whole batteries of Calexus assassins and having a very weird situation where you couldn't shoot most of them and any that you could shoot were really hard to kill anyway. They altered that in the rules pretty quickly, but you still could have very odd situations in 8th edition, such as a character just sitting entirely out on his own on an objective, and then you arbitrarily couldn't shoot them because there was a Space Marine scout squad out of line of sight, hiding somewhere in the middle of the board. Technically the scout squad will be closer, but it was kind of weird to think that the squad that you couldn't even see was somehow shielding the character, who was sat out on a deck chair with their feet up. In 9th I feel like they refined things a fair bit, they now had the stipulation that you could only get lookout sir if you had a unit or vehicle of suitable size next to them, that prevented the above situation, characters would at least have two follow squads around if they wanted protection. It still does have elements of weirdness though, say for example you could have a character that's just peeping out of the edge of the ruin and might be able to shoot the enemy but can't technically be shot back due to being too near one of their units. I feel like that's particularly weird when you have big shooting characters like say Battlesuit Commanders, Talon Masters or that Iron Hands Dreadnought, but I'd say for the most part they've ironed out the worst kinks that they had in their system in 8th. Otherwise for character rules buffs became auras, Classically things like reroll ones to hit for captains, and I feel like that was really quite a nice change compared with 7th, as I feel like it makes the positioning of your models on the table really quite a lot more important, advancing in formation as opposed to every unit basically wandering around independently. I guess that maybe made 8th and 9th edition a bit more castle perhaps, maybe 8th edition more so than 9th, in general 8th tended to have fairly loose and unrestricted terrain rules without much line of sight blocking. And it really just meant that you could just pile everything up into one massive Death Star and let the damage rip at the enemy. As opposed to in Ninth, where there's at least a bit more pressure with having to move around terrain and be fast and things, and also controlling more than just one area of the board for objectives. I feel like the 8th and 9th edition character rules did create themselves a problem with combat though. Generally I feel like Games Workshop likes the idea of characters fighting with their squads. So say a Necron Lord engaging the enemy alongside his retinue of Lich Guard, as opposed to characters fighting kind of independently, it just makes a bit more sense in the head cannon. I think. I feel that's been a little bit more awkward to coordinate in 8th and 9th with the characters and their units being individual units that fight on their own, and Heroic Intervention was introduced I think as basically a bit of a band-aid patch to try and fix that, so characters could still step up to the plate to support their unit if they got charged for example. I feel like it worked kind of well, if say you've got a small unit of 3 models and a character nearby, there's actually going to be quite a lot of the area covered where the opponent just can't charge them unless they want to fight the character as well. Though I guess it works a lot better for small units than big units, if you've got a character that's trying to protect a whole massive unit of hordes, you're probably going to still be able to charge and engage the horde regardless of that boss. I think heroic intervention works okay, but it still can just be a bit clunky honestly. You might often be blocked by your own models from making it into combat, and unless the units are quite small that are supporting each other, it can sometimes be easy enough to ignore. Also with combat as well, you have the odd situation where characters and their units can't charge together. Say for example, if you had a Death Guard Lord teleporting in with a squad of Terminators into battle, and then they both want to try and charge the enemy unit at 9 inches, you'd often get a situation where either the character or the squad makes the charge, but the other one doesn't. I guess the positive is that you get two rolls at making the charge, but the negative is that you could have the squad that's protecting the character just go charging off, and leave the character out in the wind ready to get shot, or you might have just the character charge in and then realise that he's bitten off a bit more than he can chew as the squad's been left behind and they were kind of needed to do some heavy lifting. 
You could also have the situation where even if they both made the charge, you might fight with one of them and then the opponent uses that interrupt stratagem and then it kills the other one dead before it gets to fight. I feel like all of these are kind of problems of having the characters and the units completely separate from each other. And if the character and squad just had the option to move shooter and fight as one, it would be a bit more reliable for characters and units to charge and fight at the same time, or the characters to reliably be able to step up to help the squad when they're attacked. In any case, from those hints that we've got, it does sound like characters are likely going to be back in units to some fashion. Whether or not it's kind of similar to 7th edition, or the system's going to be a fair bit different, we won't know yet, but I'll be interested to cover it on the channel when we know. If we are looking at a similar sort of system to 7th edition though, trying to shoot down characters will probably change a fair bit. It might be a very different game, rather than trying to kill all the units that are in between you and the character, it now might be just trying to focus down one squad that that character happens to be in. So I guess in general you'd want them to be with something at least fairly big and tough, that the opponent isn't just going to blast straight through and gun down the character, as they usually tend to be at least fairly fragile. From a combat and melee perspective, I feel like it might be a little bit more streamlined than before, for the reasons that we just mentioned. If you're being attached to another unit, then you'll be able to fight at the same time. No interrupting, failing individual charges, or not being able to step up to heroically intervene. They'll just fight at the same unit, and you won't be able to avoid dealing with the character too much. I feel like that could be a potential win. Finally, we have buffing abilities as well. Where Games Workshop, from that free text that they wrote, sounds like characters will be giving buffs to the squads they're leading. So it could be kind of possible that things like auras just aren't quite as prevalent in 10th edition as they are at the moment in 9th. My personal hope would be that they don't go too hard on this. As mentioned, I do quite like the way that aura buffs and things do incentivize having your leaders at the heart of the formation and trying to support other units and guide their fire. I feel like that was really quite a big and interesting step up from 7th to 8th and I wouldn't like to see it go away entirely. It does seem kind of possible from the preview as well, and I did notice that with those Termagants and Terminator datasheets, we didn't have anything like a core keyword on them. In 9th edition, that's typically been the one that stops aura buffs getting on anything too powerful. I suppose they could maybe still make it work if they just made auras and things target infantry, but again, it does seem like it might just be the squads that the characters are leading that get the benefits. Finally, in that same preview, they also mentioned the rule that Tyranids have, the adaptive part of their hive fleet, where they can get a rule that targets character units, and the way that it's worded, it says that if they get a 6 to hit, they'd get the precision rule applied to their attacks, though Games Workshop don't actually tell us what precision means. I guess it's always possible that it could be something like those lethal hits, or sustained hits, maybe something like an AP buff, but my guess would be that this is probably something that's going to allow you to target characters even if they happen to be as part of a unit, kind of similar to how things like sniper rifles might be able to do at the moment. The Tyranid rule allows your sixes to hit to gain the precision ability. My guess would be that the precision ability will be something that applies to things like sniper rifles to be able to give you a better chance of hitting characters without having to kill all their bodyguards first. Just a theory of course, but I feel like that would pair quite well with the idea of characters returning into units. So anyway though, let me know what you think. I'm sure Games Workshop will be delving into this more next week, and I'll certainly cover it here on the channel when they do. Do you think that it will be a good thing for Warhammer 40k to have characters going back to being able to join and leave units? Or do you enjoy the way that it works in 8th and 9th, being a bit more independent while still not getting shot? Look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas down in the comments as per always. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the 10th edition videos coming. I'm sure GW will give us plenty more to talk about over the next few weeks. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that one linked down in the video description below if you'd like to help keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.